words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. How many of you at your house have a garden? Yeah, garden, you know, one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> or take great pride in your lawn, because you live in the New Jersey suburbs, and taking great pride in your lawn is something that... For some reason, we don't like what God would create because then they'll call the police and say they haven't mowed their lawn in a while. We're, we're into, some people are into this. I will admit that I am not. Though I'm happy to, that there's a lawn service that comes and does it, I can push a lawnmower, but in terms of tending to something like that, not my forte. I bet last night I even didn't know what the machine is called that you can shoot the fertilizer out of. I called it a scatterer and I was told, no, that's called a spreader. And I said, there's your proof that I have no idea what I'm talking about. But I love the image that Jesus offers this morning of the farmer just scattering. Picture him just walking around, throwing seed wherever. Has no idea where it's going to land. Didn't say, okay, I'm going to dig a nice some kind of a hole, plop the seed in there, cover it with the right amount of dirt, water it constantly, all the things that you who do, you folks who do gardening know, and people like me admire. We get to, but that aspect of things start to happen just because God has chosen to scatter. The kingdom of God, of course, is all over the place because God is all over the place and is scattering his seed daily. Not just once, but all the time, so that the, his kingdom could start to break out. I don't know if Jesus would say that the kingdom of God is like a New Jersey suburb, where people fertilize their lawns and tend to their little plot. But the thing with the agricultural imagery that Jesus often uses, because that's his culture, is a reminder that God is the beginner of God's kingdom. God's the one that does the scattering, but he needs people to tend to that kingdom, to keep their eyes open for the growth, because the kingdom of God rarely just comes and says, hello, here I am. It often starts at a very small place, and if we're not attentive to it, we may miss the very parts of the kingdom breaking forth among us, and yet when the time is right, Jesus is calling us come alongside and be part of bringing out the gifts of the kingdom. But if we're not paying attention, not giving it the same details that we might to our own lawns, we may miss those opportunities. Jesus also said that the kingdom of God compared it to a mustard seed. How many of you have ever seen a mustard seed? Very itty bitty thing. I've actually seen one. I think if I weren't looking for it, I would miss it. What I have never seen, and maybe I'll have to go Google search this, is what a mustard shrub looks like. Anybody seen a mustard shrub? No, but the image makes it look really big. I have a feeling I'm going to be disappointed when I see a picture of it. But I could, maybe not. But the thing, again, that Jesus point to is a very little piece of the kingdom. Given its time, given patience for it to develop fully, can become an amazing Thing. Jesus is almost pointing to saying, little things can mean a lot. Little things can lead to greater things. But they have to be first started, they have to be tended to, and you have to be patient with it. <coughs> How many of you would say that, yeah, I know little things mean a lot. I have done a very small action that I would not have considered uh, earth shattering or amazing. But something really cool happened because of it. It was, I went well beyond what I could have asked or imagined. The kingdom of God is like that, isn't it? Small gestures on the parts of people who have put their faith in Jesus Christ, doing amazing things, even when they think, I just did nothing. I did what I should do. And yet, look what happened. How cool is that? And yet we also know that the, sometimes the other thing can happen. A very small and insignificant statement or gesture that we didn't think was anything snowballs into a whoa, not so good moment. We're like, wow, 
Yeah, little things can mean a lot, hopefully in positive ways mostly. But occasionally, little things can turn into something ugly if we're not careful about it, if we're not patient with it, if we don't say, you know, that may not have been the best idea I ever had. As I said, the kingdom of God is still happening. God didn't just do it thousands of years ago. Each day, a new part of the kingdom breaks forth. We're not called to take care of every single acre of the kingdom of God, but we are called as disciples of Jesus Christ to tend to the peace of the kingdom that we've been given dominion over. When we tend that our peace of the kingdom, and if everybody would do the same, the kingdom can be a beautiful thing. It's the inattention to the things that God wants us to pay attention to that starts to make the world slightly uglier. When those of us who claim that faith are saying, I'm gonna to tend to the peace of the kingdom in front of me, and if St. Luke says, we're going to tend to the peace of the kingdom to which we find ourselves in, Good things can happen, and perhaps others will say, that's what we should be doing, looking at our piece of the kingdom as part of a greater fabric. And when all of it is attended to, what a beautiful fabric the creation of God and his kingdom can be. Again, sometimes in our fast-paced culture and our need for instant gratification, we can get frustrated when God's time doesn't line up with our time. But if we're patient with things, we can be surprised at not only the things that we can name as being part of the kingdom happen, but those times when we open our eyes and see something that we say, wow, that too is part of God's amazing kingdom to which I am blessed and thankful to be a part of.